This is Mama Scarface, a massive and powerful T-Rex from 2008's Turok. And when I say massive, I mean massive. This absolute monster could grow up to 100 feet or 30 meters in length with a height of about 12 meters or 40 feet. She's so large and powerful that small arms fire seems to not do very much to her whatsoever. She appears several times throughout the story, accidentally saving you as well as trying to eat you and your companions. At one point, you find her nest where you have to confront and kill her offspring. Her very final appearance is at the end of the game where she finds and confronts Turok for the last time. Here, her size and power are put on full display as she attempts to do everything in her power to kill the player. Thanks to his skill and quite a bit of luck, Turok manages to bring down Mama Scarface and eventually shove a grenade into her eye, finally killing her. Before she died, she proved she was one of the most terrifying dinosaurs in any video game. Peter Jackson's King Kong introduces us to one of the most unsettling monsters in any form of media. This is Carnictus, a massive and monstrous worm. They evolved from parasitic flatworms that lived in the guts of carnivorous dinosaurs, like tapeworms. Over millions of years of evolution, they have become absolutely massive monsters, reaching up to 13 feet or 4 meters in length. One of the most terrifying parts of this animal is its dangerous, razor-sharp mouth with cone-shaped teeth. They were relatively slow-moving predators, so these cone-shaped teeth would help them hold on to any and all prey before it could get away. They're an absolutely unsettling and disgusting creature, and if you want to learn more about them and the other creepy crawlies on Skull Island, make sure to check out this video here. This is one of the most menacing creatures from the insect pit in 2005's King Kong. Sometimes known as the Reapers, these are Deplectors. They were gigantic crustaceans, reaching up to 8 feet or 2.5 meters in length. And they also boast incredibly long arms, which could reach 6 feet or 1.8 meters in and of themselves. And they also come equipped with extraordinarily long antenna. Deplectors are essentially blind, so they use these antennas to tell when there's prey just outside their cave. Using a glue-like substance, they'll launch their entire body out of the cave to capture whatever they feel with their antenna. They are terrifying predators who will make short work of anyone who comes near their cave, and if you want to learn more about them and the other creatures on Skull Island, make sure to check out this video here. This is the Piranha with Wings, one of the most terrifying creatures from Peter Jackson's King Kong. Their name is Levidu Vespa, and they are much more dangerous than you would expect. Their bodies could reach up to 8 feet or 2.5 meters in length, with a wingspan of up to 11 feet or 3.3 meters. Like many wasps, these guys live in hives serving a queen. Their queen is absolutely enormous, reaching up to 30 feet or 9.1 meters in length. These wasps serve their queen and her brood by bringing them fresh meat. Like all wasps, these guys emit pheromones to communicate with other members of their species. When they do find prey, they use their pheromones to call over other wasps and swarm over it like, you guessed it, a pack of piranhas. An absolutely horrifying creature, and if you want more horrifying creatures just in time for Halloween, make sure to check out my full-length video here. In the spirit of Halloween, let's talk about one of the weirdest dinosaur horror movies that I've ever seen. This is Carnosaur, released in the summer of 1993, the same year as Jurassic Park. The story focuses on the citizens of a small town as they try to deal with a crazy scientist who's trying to wipe out humanity. The crazy scientist, Dr. Tiptree, tries to accomplish this by creating an airborne disease that infects women with dinosaur embryos. Like I said, this movie is absolutely bonkers. She was able to create this disease through experiments on genetically modified chickens, which also happened to create a Deinonychus at one point. The Deinonychus is one of the main antagonists of the film and terrorizes and kills many of the citizens in the town. Though it is revealed that Tiptree created a full-grown T-Rex at some point, though they never exactly make it clear how or where she got it. Thankfully, her insanity gets the better of her and Tiptree ends up succumbing to the disease she created. There's a lot I could say about this movie or its many sequels, but all I'll say for now is it's an absolutely wild time. Carnosaur is a completely insane movie, but did you know that it's based off a book that's even more insane? Written by John Brosnan in 1984, the novel follows David Pascal, a reporter investigating mysterious animal attacks in England. A rich man named Darren Penward has a private zoo, and it's thought that one of his tigers escaped. Pascal eventually finds a survivor from one of the attacks who tells him it's not a tiger, but a dinosaur. He ends up seducing Penward's wife, who shows him that the zoo is not just modern animals, but filled with dinosaurs. This was allegedly achieved by restructuring chicken DNA. 
Kenward believes that a third world war is coming and plans to release all the dinosaurs into the wild post-war. While escaping, the pair run into Pascal's ex Jenny, another reporter, and in a fit of jealous rage, Miss Penward releases all the dinosaurs when he insists on helping her. What follows is absolute chaos as the dinosaurs go on a rampage throughout England. Some of the dinosaurs include Tarbosaurus, Altaspinax, and of course, Deinonychus. The novel is much different from the book, and I highly recommend that you check it out for yourself. This is one of the most powerful and terrifying dinosaurs ever created, Arx Giganotosaurus. Reaching up to about 70 feet or 21 meters in length, it is an absolutely massive animal, far larger than its real-life counterpart. It is the largest and most powerful dinosaur in the game, only beaten by titanosaurs and the bosses. Aside from sheer size, they have a few abilities that put them ahead of the pack. Thanks to their blade-like teeth, they're granted an ability known as Nashed, which allows them to cause bleeding damage over time. Even if you manage to do significant damage, it can often trigger their rage mode. In this state, their attacks are much more powerful and destructive, and they can't tell the the difference between friend and foe. These monsters have no natural predators on the island and will often just roam around killing indiscriminately. And you'd think because of how large it is, it'd be a relatively slow creature, but no, it's pretty fast, and I'm sure you know that if you've seen these videos. All in all, this is the most terrifying version of Giganotosaurus. So a lot of people have asked me, what made the dinosaurs go extinct? Most people point towards the meteor or the asteroid that hit the Earth. But in truth, it was far more horrifying. What really drove the dinosaurs to extinction was this beast East here, Queso. Legends say he fell from the sky in a great ball of fire, which is where the myth of the meteor comes from. After landing, he went on to consume every land-based animal he could get his hands on, except for small mammals because they were either too fast or too small for him to care. Afterwards, he dove into the sea where he ate so much marine life that the pterosaurs went extinct. Because he couldn't catch the birds, they were the only dinosaurs who survived, and afterwards, Queso went into hibernation. After millions of years, he is now awoken from his slumber, ready to come back for the remainder of the dinosaurs. Yeah, we eat good now, baby! Oh, man, I'm sorry. Look. <laughs> One of the most dangerous creatures in all of the Jurassic Park novels, this is the Lost World's Carnotaurus. They were smaller than the real deal, standing at around 7 feet or 2.1 meters and measuring in at around 20 to 25 feet or 6 to 7.5 meters. So if they're smaller, what makes them so dangerous? If you remember the Indominus Rex, one of the reasons it was so dangerous was because it could camouflage extremely well. It could camouflage! These Carnotaurus are not only able to camouflage, but they're able to mimic complex patterns like a chain link fence and even the plants around it. In fact, during the nighttime, it's said that they're almost invisible unless you really pay attention, kind of like an elite from Halo. All the dinosaurs of Isla Sorna feared the Carnotaurus during the night. And if you'd like to learn more, make sure you check out this video. These are the largest carnivorous dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park franchise. Starting with a pair of tyrannosaurs known as the Buck and Doe, these are the two from the Lost World. They stand at 17 feet or 5.1 meters tall and around 12 meters or 40 feet in length, weighing around 8 tons. Next up, we've got the Indominus Rex. This Indominus was around 5.5 meters or 18 feet tall and around 12 meters or 40 feet in length, with an unknown weight. Next up, we've got Rexy, or Roberta as some folks like to call her. She stands at 5.5 meters or 18 feet tall and 13 and a half meters or 44 feet in length, weighing around 9 tons. Next up, we've got none other than the Spinosaurus. The largest Spinosaurus in the franchise could reach 6 meters or 20 feet tall and 13 and a half meters or 44 feet in length, with a weight of around 10 tons. The largest on-screen carnivore we get to see is none other than the Giganotosaurus. This behemoth stood at around 6 meters or 20 feet tall and 15 and a half meters or 51 feet in length, weighing around 10 tons. In Malcolm's own word, did you know that Jurassic Park compies are actually venomous? The compies in both the Jurassic Park book and film are venomous, but in the films they're less so. In the novel, however, their venom is potent enough to land them a few kills. So, what kind of venom do compies have? The compies have a special type of venom, laced with high amounts of serotonin. Many of you may already know that serotonin, along with dopamine, is one of the happy chemicals. Our brain uses serotonin to give us feelings of pleasure and excitement. Compies use it in a more sinister way. This high amount of serotonin gives prey a false sense of calm. It makes their prey calm and happy and allows the compie to eat with very little resistance. One of the only creatures that can kill you while making you happy. 
horrifying. The most recent Jurassic World film wasn't very popular, but this creature within it was. This is Jurassic World's Therizinosaurus. This individual was 10 meters or 33 feet in length and stood at around 16 and a half feet tall, about 5 meters. And weighing in at just over 5 tons, it's actually a fairly accurate size for this animal, albeit it looks a little skinny. At some point, this particular individual lost its eyesight, which allowed it to gain echolocation. And most of you already know, but that would not happen in real life. This Therizinosaurus is incredibly territorial and will even kill other herbivores in its area. Personally, I don't think this Therizinosaurus is that bad, but I have one major issue with it other than its blindness. That issue would be Therizinosaurus's famous claws. In the film, its claws are almost straight with little to no curve. The extremely long claws on a real Therizinosaurus would have been curved. Either way, this feathered dinosaur made an interesting addition to Jurassic World. Did you know that this is Jurassic Park's original Mosasaur? This is the Tylosaurus from Jurassic Park the Game. Before Jurassic World was even thought of, this was the only underwater menace we had for this franchise. While not as large as their future counterpart, their size is actually fairly accurate. This Tylosaurus reached 46 feet or 14 meters in length. While its length is accurate, its weight is most certainly not, as this animal could reach 15 to 20 tons as opposed to the real animal, who weighs around 8 tons. The Tylosaurus appears as the group is trying to escape from the underwater facility. It manages to claim one victim before the rest of the group makes it to safety. After this, we never see this version of Tylosaurus in any Jurassic media. But for many of us, this design is a fan favorite. Since the Jurassic World movies have thrown accuracy out the window, it wouldn't be a bad idea to bring this guy back. Just some food for thought. The Scorpius Rex was Dr. Wu's first successful hybrid and one of the most dangerous dinosaurs in all the Jurassic franchise. But what makes this failed hybrid so dangerous? Like the rest of Wu's hybrids, they had grasping claws and opposable thumbs, allowing them to climb, and they also were able to use a prehensile tail to assist them. Like the Indominus, the Scorpius can see in infrared, allowing it to detect body heat. The Scorpius was deformed, similar to a pug with a brachycephalic muzzle. It's thought that because of all its genetic defects, it drove this animal insane, which is why it kills anything it sees. The Scorpius is named after the scorpion fish, whose DNA gave them venomous spikes. Like Blue, the Scorpius can reproduce asexually using a process called parthenogenesis. Because of how fast the Scorpius grows, this means within two weeks you could have too many to handle. And it just goes to show that Wu is actually right to decommission this one. Before Jurassic Park 3 introduced us to Pteranodon and before they were updated in Jurassic World, the Lost World Jurassic Park gave us our first look at this flying pterosaur. The design in Jurassic World isn't the best, they have an incredibly short crest and overall their body just looks kind of odd. Personally, as a movie monster, I really enjoy Jurassic Park 3's Pteranodon. The only issue with the Jurassic Park 3 design is that it has teeth, which kind of fits with the Jurassic Park theme. However, the very first time we see Pteranodon at the end of the Lost World is probably the most accurate we've gotten. Certainly, this design has some issues on its own, but it doesn't have teeth in the beak and its crest is the appropriate length. And honestly, it's one of my favorite designs that should be brought back, albeit a little bit updated. If you'd like to learn more about the creatures in the Lost World, make sure to check out this video here. He said it was busy. He took out a lot more. I just meant he wanted to be the truth. <laughs>